Hey everybody, it's Terry at D-Lab. The other day I received this Johnson Viking 2 CDC model in for repair. So this was a civil defense unit. They're pretty rare. First one that I've ever worked on. Customer complaint is, you dug it out of the basement, been sitting for quite a few years, you flipped on the main power switch, and soon after that, smoke came out of the radio and it died. So we're gonna give it an initial inspection We'll pop the bottom and see if we can determine what fried. Here we go. Initial inspection. Johnson Viking 2 CDC transmitter from the 1950s with the matching VFO Model 122. We'll start off by taking a close look at the front panel. She's got a few battle scars, but it really does look good. There is a lot of dirt and grunge on all the knobs. The plate tuning window is missing the indicator, but is it really? No, it's above. So this assembly, for some reason, has been flipped. That's kind of odd. The meter glass is pushed back, so I would not run this transmitter until I repair that, because we don't want to damage the meter movement. So yeah, she needs a cleanup. One bonus of the CDC is it came with push to talk. So it has that famous Johnson two-pin connector. All right, let's go around back. All right, here's the back side of the Viking 2 transmitter. This is where you plug in your VFO. So power's here, signal's here. It's AC power coming in. This crystal socket is for 120 volts that controls your Dow key relay. And this is the RF out jack. You take a look at that guy, it's in bad shape. So I'll have to repair that before I can try to transmit with this thing. Let's pop the top. Here's the inside of the Viking CDC. One thing to note immediately is the inside of the cabinet is not copper plated like you would see on a standard Viking 2. This chassis is pretty crusty dusty. I understand that these are all factory built. So you won't see the red stamp between the 5R4 rectifier tubes. So maybe somewhere else on the chassis, they've identified that. The crystal bank has a few crystals installed. I pulled one, and it was on 80 meters. Everything in here looks good. It just needs a serious cleanup. So the roller inductor is free to spin, and that's a good sign. It's not binding. The controls on this feel nice and tight. All right, now for the fun part, let's pop that bottom panel and see if we can find a smoke trail. There's only two screws holding the bottom panel on, so that was a pretty easy removal. Looks like somebody put in a really nice capacitor assembly there. She is full of the old wax caps. Big old selenium rectifier. Never seen one of those on one of these radios. Looks like the audio section it's full of all the waxers, so I'm sure they're shot. Don't see anything yet that could have produced a smoke path. My guess is one of these caps let loose. I'm going to have to unwrap this and see what's going on. And there's another cap behind it. I'm sure that's the negative bias cap. And that's been subbed in too. So I want to point out, this is the gigantic push to talk relay that Johnson installed in the CDC transmitters. It's controlled by one of the pins of the mic jack up front. It switches 120 volts to the primary of the high voltage transformer and the TR switch outlet, plus it toggles the key line, which puts the transmitter into transmit mode. There's those caps that wrapped up in electrical tape. I was looking for a bubble in the end of them, but nothing. None of the caps show any smoke trails but my guess is I'm sure one of them let loose you just can't see it because it's contained in that tube I did check the modulation adjust resistor and this 20k resistor that's on the back of the CW phone switch this guy is open this one is okay so my course of action we're gonna recap it and bring it up on a bariac slowly and see if the power supplies are okay I'll be posting follow-up videos of the Johnson Viking 2 CDC transmitter repair soon. 
I need to clean this thing up and get the new filter caps installed and bring it up on a variac. That will be shown in the next video. Let's hope the power supplies come to life. We'll see you then.